Water. Such an amazing thing. We can drink it, swim in it, jump in it while making splashes everywhere. Without it, life will not be possible. As we all will be really thirsty. You know what? Water is cool. And we will put it in our cool game where it belongs. But how? Unfortunately, we can just spill water into our computer and call it a day. We need to find more practical ways. Hmm. So after researching, I have found that there are ways to create water in video games without getting computer wet. We will break the water creation into two main parts, visual and interaction. Let's start with the visuals. First, we need to be aware that we are creating an illusion. We try to find the characteristics that define water and replicate that into our games, hoping that the player will be convinced that what they are seeing is water. In older games, they have used animated drone waves to represent water. Then they got better at it as the technology evolved and they started introducing colors to it. Whoa. Then material shaders, which enable light interactions rendering with water textures. More and more programmers and artists are learning to sell the illusion of quality water while keeping real-time frame rates for a smooth gaming experience. Now let's do the same for our game. First we will create our material and apply watercolor to it via texture image that I found on the internet. We will add specular, roughness and refraction values to make it look more like water. Also we will lower the opacity so that we can see through it. Now it looks much better. However this isn't enough. To be able to sell the illusion more, we want the water to move. Nice technique to do that is by using normal maps and moving them in opposite directions. For those who don't know, normal maps are heavily used in most modern games. They are texture images that enable the lighting to interact with the 3D model as if there is actual detailed heights in it, even though it can just be a flat geometry. And this helps greatly in performance. Without normal map, with normal map, without, with. You see the difference? We will use our normal map that we also got from the internet. And you see how it looks with the normal map? Without, with. We will duplicate the map and make them both move in opposite directions. That will create the illusion of moving small waves. Awesome. What about big waves you say? To do that, we can use vertex displacement, where we manipulate the model geometry from the material to move it like waves. However, it's heavy on performance, so we try to stay away from it. But we will do it anyway. We subdivide the model to make it have more geometrical faces. Then we do a math equation that I don't understand to make the vertex move in sine waves. Nice big big waves. But that's for the visuals. What about interactions with water? Like, what if the player jumps in it? What if he shoots at it? What if he wants to walk in it? What if, what if, what if? Well, here comes the scripting part, where we start creating behaviors to the water based on player's actions. Now we can go on forever and script feedback behaviors to every possible action that a player can make. But we will not do that, since we have a life that we want to live, you know? I miss going outside. <laughs> and the behaviors mainly depends on the specific goals of the game that is being created. Some just decide to kill the player once they touch water. But you know what? We will make our player swim. And we will also program behavior so that when they jump in the water, it will splash. And when the camera goes underwater, we'll make it see water effects. And, uh, and, uh... <clears throat> At the beginning, we will make our water an actor, attaching a collision box to it. And when a player collides with this box, we will call our custom swimming event, where we will write our logic in. So let's write our logic. 
First, we will make the character movement act as it's in water physics volume. That changes the physics rules to behave more like flowy water. See? I feel like I'm in water already. Okay, it's, it's not exactly water yet. We need to be able to move in all directions, so we'll feed our movement input based on our camera direction instead of the character's direction. Good, but it looks stupid. We want to be able to rotate in the moving direction too, so we will do that. Now it doesn't look stupid at all. Now we will implement our swimming animations. We have this swimming idle and swimming forward animations that we got online from Maximo and retargeted them to our character. We will blend these animations together based on the moving speed of the character. Great! Now we need to communicate on when to enter this swimming animation state. So we will create a variable called is swimming that we set true when collides with water and falls when not colliding. And we will enter our swimming animation state if this variable is true and exit it if it's false. See? Let's test it. Perfecto. Kinda. We need to reset all our logic when the player ends collision with water. Great. Mm. <clears throat> also when out of water, we will set all rotation axis to zero except for Z axis. Awesome! Our swimming system works! That's unusual. For more polishing, we will add splash VFX when jumping in water. Because splashes are cool. And to do that, we created a splash material based on image. Then open Niagara, which is a real engine's next generation real time VFX creation tool. <laughs> yes, I opened this spaceship technology to create splashes, and I'm proud of that. So I started creating the splash VFX based on the material that we have created, controlling its spawning, direction, and gravity force. Then call it to be spawned at the player's location when touching water. Nice. Nice. Let's try jumping from here. We. One more time. We. Okay, I should probably stop. We. Okay, enough. <coughs> We have a problem here. I don't know if you have noticed or not, but when we are underwater, it doesn't look like we're underwater. So to fix that, we will modify our camera settings when it collides with water, to make it appear as we are underwater, you know? Illusion. We will do that via post-process to weaken the colors, exposure, bloom, lens flare, vignette, chromatic operation, Mmm, done. We we're swimming underwater. We're swimming underwater. Finally, beautiful. I decided to create a small scene showing the water that we have created in action. I will upload the time lapse working on this scene if you're interested to watch it. But for now, here is the final scene. That's it guys, like and subscribe if you like this video, 
share it with your friends who drinks water. Tell me in the comments the next topic you want me to cover. And remember friends, to always drink enough water.